I've been to Taiwan many times. I felt like I'm still in a dream. Sometimes I, I walk down the streets and I, I get this kind of uh, attack in my head, thinking uh, this is not real. This is not real, but the person standing in front of me, this piece of bread when I was just shopping is like in front of me and I cannot believe that I am physically here in Taiwan. So, um, and I, I'm sure this feeling will uh, last for maybe a few months. And, and then I realized I felt like this because I have not created enough connections between me and the artifacts and the people in front of me. For example, I couldn't remember the street names even, right? So, so this is what I've been, been doing recently. I, I opened the map and I start memorizing the, the name of the streets. You know, the big cross street is Taiwan, big row, and this street, this street is uh, uh, Min Chuan, uh, the, the human, the, the citizens' rights row, and and then I have I start to have a connection with them, you know, or or, or the restaurant that nearly opened be, be below my apartment, and I start making friends with them, and so I think uh, it's important to have connections, and the more you you events that you create, the more emotion you have to these events and people and artifacts. And that's how you connect to the place. Yeah. So that's, and the more you do that, the lesser the feeling of being in a dream, but rather become reality. Taiwan, I think, will give me the 100% freedom of artistic expression that I'm looking for. That's why uh, I come here. And do you think that will have an influence on your future work? Well, I think uh, the inference will not be f from Taiwan, but from my personal experience of having to leave Hong Kong and kind of put myself into this self-exile mode. I think that itself uh, it will be generating a lot of inspiration. And a lot of my past work have been autobiographical anyways. So, such as uh, my paddling home, I made this little four feet by four feet by four feet uh, house, uh, houseboat that sells the Victoria Harbor. But that piece of work was not about this political turmoil that Hong Kong was going through, but rather the kind of economical uh, shift, which is a tradition of Hong Kong people moving the kids away to get a better education. But of course this time uh, is very different. This time is that when the people are leaving Hong Kong, I think most of them are not planning to come back. I still remember that initially I, I felt everything was made out of ashes. When I look at a skyscraper on the streets, a car, a person walking in front of me, I felt uh, they're not real, they're made of ashes because I felt when the wind blow, they would just fade away. But I think that's an that's a emotion that is playing tricks on me inside my head. In reality, Hong Kong, the hardware will remain, but the Hong Kong that I have known, I'm bringing with me, the spirit. The Hong Kong that I have known no longer exists. So that's why I must confront it. So that, that very sad feeling of everything I made of ashes just uh, fade away after the first month after I decided to leave Hong Kong to come to Taiwan. And then I, it comes to my reality that I am bringing Hong Kong with me no matter where I go. So Hong Kong can only be rescued in that way. Taiwan definitely will give me the artistic freedom that I was searching, as well as the space, as well as the, um, 
platform. I mean, it's a democratic, uh, open society, and I can blend in quite well. I can speak the language, as well as I appreciate the culture. I'm not thinking about only in six months' time. I'm thinking about maybe in six years' time or 20 years' time. I mean, this place I can kind of completely blend in. When I walk down the street, uh, I look like everybody else, and that's a blessing for me, as well as the, the food and the culture for me to continue to grow as a human being, as a student of life. Taiwan can provide a lot, and that's why I decided to come here. That is not to say uh, UK cannot provide the same. And I also appreciate uh, the culture in UK as well as the rest of Europe too. As a matter of fact, right now, a lot of Hong Kong people, when they're leaving, they go to UK instead of going to Taiwan. But for me, I think um, um, the distance between Hong Kong and Taiwan are relatively close, as well as the, the culture that is very similar. The food here is just fantastic. And the standard of living is, uh, is great. Look at this studio. I could have never afforded something like this in, in Hong Kong, since the standard of living in Hong Kong is so high. It's actually the highest in the world. So in many aspects, I think uh, Taiwan is a very good base for me to set up uh, to continue my resistance. The plan here is to get all my artwork that I have done in the past two decades to Taiwan and set it up like a mini museum of my work and as well as a highly equipped workshop in woods and also in steel for welding and then maybe build a loft upstairs like a, a wooden hut <laughs> on top of this white cube <laughs> So it is like a house within a house kind of concept. I can imagine after the pandemic dies down a bit and travel bubbles uh, will open up for travelers, then some of my friends in Hong Kong or from the international communi art community would love to come visit me. Or if not, I can still have a nice tranquil place in here to continue my work. First, I, I didn't know that much about Taichung. And uh, for me, uh, I start to slowly discover it when I was doing my kind of escape plan research. And the more I research, the more I find out I don't want to repeat my life in Hong Kong. I want a kind of quieter, more countryside, as well as a base <clears throat> that allows me to fully explore the whole of Taiwan. I actually rented a car to drive around the whole of Taiwan almost like 15 years ago. So I, Taiwan is not a completely new place for me. And I really love the countryside as well as the Aboriginal culture of Taiwan. But if I, let's say, set up my base in tai Taipei, then of course I can assets the, uh, the arts and culture there, which is very vibrant. But in terms of travel distance, it will be very far away. Let's say if I want to go to Tainan or go to Kaohsiung, it will be like so far away. And that mindset will stop me from traveling and exploring. So Taichung is right at the center of the big island. So I can go to the east, and to the north, to the south, we're talking about three hours travel time, and that's very short. And that will give me an incentive to you know, continue to explore and travel, to get to know Taiwan for the second time. I think the art scenes in Taiwan is, uh, is very vibrant and, and full of depth for my, uh, you know, from my observation for the past two decades. I have known Taiwan's art scenes a long ago because Taiwan have, of course, like, like right now when people, the, when the West are looking at Taiwan, they think, oh, it's a democratic Taiwan, but they have not, uh, probably don't know Taiwan used to be uh, 
very, uh, very authoritarian. Yeah. Let's say the time before 1985, when Kuomintang was operating here in full scale, we're talking about, you know, activists have to burn themselves to death in order to fight for the freedom they already have, they're supposed to have. So, so the kind of democratic free Taiwan that we're seeing right now was, was fought after you know, one, one struggle after another. Many people you know, die in order to get to this point where uh, people can freely elect the presidents and, and the multi-parties are able to rotate a few times. Okay? So, so this is, uh, this is something uh, important for me because that indicates uh, the, the democratic system in here is working uh, rather than uh, having one single party that rules continuously for more than 70 years. <laughs> the art scenes, because of that political turmoil as well as uh, compl complexity of cultures, such as, such as uh, uh, the, the Kuomintang Chinese culture that came into Taiwan, as well as its original culture, uh, such as uh, the Aboriginal culture, as well as the Dutch, as well as the, uh, the, the current democratic struggle. So the topic of identity and, and, uh, and social issues was well and fully developed may way, way earlier on in comparison to Hong Kong's art scenes. So, so for me, uh, it's full of depth and also full of uh, textures. And that's one of the attractiveness for me to come to Taiwan and to learn you know, about their art scenes. I think there's a parallel, parallelism in terms of Taiwan and culture. Uh, Taiwan and, and, and Hong Kong, or should I say Hong Kong and Taiwan. There's a saying, uh, today's Hong Kong, tomorrow's Taiwan. So in that, that kind of bring Hong Kong and Taiwan together as a kind of uh, victims of political suppression from uh, Chinese Communist Party. Most the really definitely, definitely, that coziness was gone long ago. That coziness, uh, including the international community, uh, discovering what the Chinese Communist Party are doing, right? They're stealing and hacking. So it comes down to fundamentals, money or morality, okay? And in, in, initially, people were just like, when they saw the Chinese renminbi, they was like, wow, that's easy money, let's go for it, and set a factory and sell and buy, ditching their morality code. But I think the Wuhan virus uh, changes all that. And also the crackdown on, in, in Hong Kong changes all that too. People and in international community slowly realizing that to sell out your country for a few bags of coffee beans just doesn't worth it and and it will hit you back as like a boomerang not today maybe tomorrow so so this is uh, this coziness uh, one country two system this kind of we are you know peaceful country blah 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 it's just a lie and people will see that and that's why that's a huge kind of reunification in NATO as well as uh, EU, as well as uh, the linkage between Hong Kong, Taiwan, Thailand, Myanmar. So this kind of uh, solidarity is forming in Southeast Asia as well as in the Western world. Now why, why, why is the story of Hong Kong important? Because Hong Kong is actually a model city of the West set up in eastern soil and when you're watching it collapse in such a fast speed it is a gigantic alarm bell for every western city to take caution of because how, that's how it's going to fall in terms of uh, uh, the trend of the international community it is building up and and coming to the attention such as the Xinjiang uh, labor camp, 
the concentration camps there. It's a, it's a serious issue. It's a serious anti-human issue. All right, so, so every country have to make a decision. Every leaders in the world have to make a decision. Is money or the morality? And I am glad to see a lot of you know, international leaders are finally coming to the terms of, yes, we should make the right decision. Mm -hmm.